Okay, so to give you an idea of some of the other prototypes that are coming up in, in, in the series, uh, I'm not ready because I still have to do all some of the documenting, editing, and things like that, but they're built, they're done, or, or for the most part, right? But like this is one, a prototype that's uh, based from, made from rustic cherry. This is cherry that came off of a tree um, on our land some 20 years ago, and I've been saving the wood ever since. So I'm going to make something out of that. And that inner piece is actually cherry that came from, uh, I think, some flooring. And so, but what I was testing there was, can I do a 45 or a 30? This is a 30, right? Which would be typical for like a post, uh, like a railing on a, on a house. Uh, but it could also be used as uh, for like the farm, farm tile type table. And a little tough to display here, but the farm style table bases that have that X at the bottom for the legs, this would, this would be ideal, right? But I still have to spend some time prototyping that. This is another one made of oak that I found out in the yard. This was from a tree taken down by at a customer's uh, land a few years ago. I had it, they didn't want it. I had it sawn up and it's been out in the yard ever since, right? But then I took some of the same pieces and this is another prototype again that would be for like a bed rail or a footboard. Um, and it's turning out pretty nice actually. It's got that rustic look to it, definitely, but rustic, somewhat rustic, but not too rustic. Uh, got that going and I'm just experimenting with some of the joinery, like how I want to mount the tenons for the taller stuff. And especially if I got up into like a taller, taller, taller headboard, um, how is that going to happen? But this one I, you know, was prototyping uh, how to fill, basically that void, that 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 uh, groove was made by a shaper. So it goes from one end to the other, but then how do I space that? How do I fill that? Uh, and so on. So it's working on that. And by the way, if you're, this is a, a bed, I think it's okay. But if it's a bunk bed, that's not legal and it's not safe for because of the spacing. And so when I do this prototype and I publish the Instructable, it will include uh, some links to how to build beds, you know, where bed rails to be safe from for infants from getting their heads uh, from, from from entrapment. And then it would not be legal for the yet for the railing on a house uh, because the railing on a house, there's basically a sphere rule that and if it's about the size of a croquet ball that has to that can't fit through there right uh, and so those would become closer so if i this is the prototype though to figure out how am i going to attach that can i can i run the dados uh the uh, tongues on the ends of those through a shaper and then how is this all going to come together well it worked you know and there were i made notes along the way as to how to, to modify some stuff now this one looks pretty bad because this is coming from the back but this was some ash that i had laying around again rustic right my style a little bit of you know that kind of stuff going on and then in between here this was firewood well those are individual pieces of firewood but if we take a look at the other side of this it's starting to show some show some promise right and basically what i did here is all right can i make rails for beds for uh headboard for footboard for sideboards can i make it out of firewood and the answer is yes and it worked extremely well. In fact, this is like the same type of piece that's in there uh, where I put the tongue on the end. Uh, this, if it's gonna go in here, it could either be spaced, but kind of like I did there, right? You could space between each using code for you know safety and so on and, and entrapment. Uh, but th then we get technical and we start putting that end on there. Well, how are we gonna do that? Real easy, not easy, super easy, but it's, it's actually pretty easy to do on a shaper if you have a shaper. But if I'm camping, how am I gonna do that? Well, it can be done, and the question is how? Well, I have a something in mind which would be a rabbit. R-A-B-B-E-T, I believe. Not the kind of bunny that you know you see at, at, at uh, Easter time, but it's very doable. Well, that goes into there, right? This was part of the prototyping was how deep should that be? And then how long should those tongues be? Like these are, tongues were not long enough or the the uh, the groove was too deep. Now, I made some changes afterwards. I documented that. That'll be part of the prototype number two or three or four. I can't remember which one, but it's going to be part of the series coming up uh, on Instructables that I post. And then how I did that. Now, this one I poured a two-part epoxy 
and there was some some it really worked well for that because you have a built-in ridge along the side that is awesome but that would be tough if you were going to try to do it with spaces between right how are you going to do that um this one i even went crazy on i, I wanted to show the the threaded tenon joinery this is something that i have a patent on believe it or not and um it's not available on the open market uh yet anyhow so we'll see what happens there but but this is i wanted to make a prototype so i can do demos on how that looks on the inside so this is the threaded tenon the metal tenon this is the patented item and then i have a couple of grks that go in right and then there's the the hole for the thread which the bolt would go into that becomes part of the joinery to attach it to uh, a post you know like these posts that we're talking about here that i show elsewhere um so that's another prototype that I built. Uh, that would be part of a part of the series. This is another one for people that do not have a shaper and do not have a router, do not have a, a mounted uh, a, the ability to um, to make basically the dado. And what I did here on this prototype was I made the the dado, the the the, the groove right by basically doing a glue up. So you have a you have a, a chunk of wood. Uh, a thin one to, at, at that. It's only uh, probably three eighths or a quarter inch. And then I took some black walnut and using glue ups created that, right? And then I, it, that becomes the, the, the flange like up here or like there, but it's made up rather than by using a router. So if, if you're looking at some of these things and you look at, well, I don't have a shaper, I don't have a router table, I don't have. Um, a stacked dado blade in my table saw, how am I going to even accomplish this? Well, this is very, very doable, but you do need a good way to do the glue ups. That's the micro bench, and then you need some good clamps. You know, these are the R and R's that you'll see me to do all the time. I'm not, uh, again, I'm not sponsored by anybody, but these clamps really, really work. But that's how you can do that kind of stuff. But you need the right materials, you need the right tools, and you need technique. And those all become part of the equation, which is P equals M plus J, T plus J. I'll cover that, which is uh, project equals materials plus tools plus joinery. And I'll cover that in, 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 all, in all of these uh, prototypes. Um, let's see here, other prototypes that I was doing. This was the post. I had, I, this, is, this will actually show up in prototype. And this is prototype number one. This is a triple laminated uh, chunk of oak. oak. You can, if you look really, really close, you can see that there's three pieces there. I can't even find it. Where is it? It's, you know, if I can't find it, it's, it's, it's got to be pretty decent, right? Look at that. But that is, if you look really, really close, you can see there's a line there. But that was all done on a micro bench, and it was done using reclaimed, uh, in this case, it was lumber that came out of my own field that had been sitting there for like five or six years, starting to rot. Uh, I pulled it in, cleaned it up, and it's making some pretty, pretty nice posts. Okay, so that is prototype number one, the posts, and I'll show you how to make that in, in this instructable. Uh, then the other thing, uh, let's see once, if I did this, yes, this was this instructable, this is actually prototype number one. This was the first one, and that's the one that's going to be in this particular instructable, which is, I took, <laughs> I took some uh, ash that I had laying around and that I had been testing the CNC on, right? So I just grabbed, but I, I saved it. It was either going to be firewood or something, but I saved it. thought, okay, I'll go ahead and use that. This is some maple that I had laying around and one inch. <clears throat> so I shaped those, did what I did there. And again, you can see all kinds of holes in there from, I had been using that for prototyping a CNC run that I was doing, right? Well, then I tested the, the shaper and to see how deep that, that hole should, or the uh, pocket should be. Did the same thing there, and I want that space in there because I use Gorilla Glue, and I want a little bit of space. <clears throat> and then I also tested the hardware and tested. So this is prototype number one. It's about uh, 24 inches long. This would be a bed rail, like the side rail of a bed. Uh, it would be. <laughs> it would also be uh, suitable to maybe downsize it a little bit more, like to this size for a handrail. Um, it could be cut like this one here, which would be the. Um, for a stair railing or whatever, but it's basically, can you see what's going on there? It's got that same pattern going, which is this, this post and rail that I'm doing. I'm calling them micro rails. And then this would be a micro post. And then this stuff would be uh, micro tenons. 
So that's where I'm going with that. I can't think if I have any other prototypes going here. If I do, they're lost and I'll find them some point. But anyway, oh, I forgot about this one. This is another prototype. And uh, this one, is, I'm really looking forward to, to continuing uh, to, to improve on. But basically this is for the side rail typically of a, uh, like a, a uh, raised garden bed. So this is where I use, you have to use natural slate on that because otherwise the, the can't handle the freezing temperatures. But again, I grabbed some, this was really, really early stage of prototyping. I grabbed some scrap pine or whatever, some scrap this, some scrap treated. Uh, did the same thing though. It's using the same concept, right? And there's, you know, I'm realizing as you get into larger and larger stuff, you got to be a little more selective and clean up the material a lot more before you run the running through like the shaper or the router, but these really work. And um, so right now it's just clamped to to kind of hold it in position. And then you can see when I prototype, I, I kind of start making notes like garden bed, uh, slate would be ideal, uh, the offset, yes, add one inch to two inch styrofoam. So this, what I would do, and I picked up a piece of this formula, they call them project panels at Home Depot. It's basically one, in, one inch by two foot by two foot, and they just pre-cut it, which is really pretty handy. So then when I design the rest of it, I'll design it so that these could, either this or in the, in the full four by eight sheet, but could be ripped, and you can do that on a table saw um, or whatever, uh, a, a track saw, but you could rip them. But then they, the design will, will specifically state, uh, and I'll watch for that, how much space goes from here to here so you don't have a bunch of waste or just run short. But those would go right inside there, and that would be between the garden bed wall and the dirt. And what that'll do is that'll do a couple of things. It'll cushion. Um, this, all of this, from that, that hydrostatic pressure that comes out of a guard, raised garden bed. The taller the garden bed, the more vulnerable it is to that. But I've been around a lot of garden beds, and I've seen people try to do them, and they look great for about a month. And then two months later, three months later, and especially the next spring, they start bowing out. Well, that's not going to happen if you have the I-beam effect, which is going on right here, right? And if it's done right, and if these, there's the right kinds of stiffeners, the right kinds of adhesives, and then I think adding the styrofoam is going to really help. It'll also help the styrofoam wheel in terms of insulation. In our area right now, I'm wearing a, my Carhartt, right? jacket and it's it's almost the end of may right fishing season's already open but i'm wearing a car hurt because we get a lot of cold nights in the spring well that'll cushion that in fact uh we were out this morning with my wife looking at the garden the stuff in the ground the asparagus is growing like crazy the stuff in the garden bed is just starting because there's cold air you know coming through the side there and that i think that's going to help on that kind of stuff so the uh, the uh the sun will warm up the garden bed itself but yet that cold air won't be fighting against that. Um, these are readily available and they're not very expensive. These are slate, natural slate. Um, there's other products, I think porcelain works. I'm checking into that, that works. And then the nice thing about porcelain is that it's, I believe it's rated for outdoor. Some of it is outdoor. And then, but you can also buy it in six inch and nine inch and eight inch and seven inch heights where again, you don't have to have a tool to cut it. Uh, you don't need a tile saw. You don't need any experience in doing that. You just buy those, but you design accordingly, which would be these vertical wood webs. And each of those, by the way, have a dado in them to, to accept this tile, right? Like a PL product, like um, um, a uh, premium adhesive, construction adhesive, tip, the type of stuff that carpenters use uh, when, when building houses and floor systems. So, but... Then when I made this, and again, this is the idea of prototyping, then I look at stuff like this, uh, no GRK on top. Uh, just notes that I made during the prototyping that I'll now take on to the next prototype. So there we go. But the nice thing about this one, where I'm really getting excited about this one actually is because, again, going back to the porcelain, but if you're going to be doing it for indoor use, like a bed side rail, uh, a bed footboard, headboards, 
there's huge potential in this particular concept, which is basically combining that tile thing with some of the other stuff that done here. So for instance, uh, on this, you know, this is interior, right? It's oak, but those tile can go in there and those tiles are available not just in porcelain, but if it's for interior use, they can be tiles that are made of other stuff that will match a bathroom. They'll, they'll match uh, whatever. You can put carpet panels in there. You can put uh, wood, like I've done here, that'll match a wood flooring in the bedroom. And, you know, just all kinds of stuff. So the idea is to come up with the, the pattern, the standard of, all right, where do I start? And that's where this one came in, the prototype number one. So again, just to give you an idea how prototyping works is, you know, a while back I was using that quarter inch um, dado blade on the table saw and possibly a shaper, but this was earlier versions of the same thing that we're doing here. You can see the I-beam thing, but this is probably five, six, seven, eight years old. Uh, but I wanted to test, you know, can I do rustic black walnut? Uh, you can see that the, the three inch was probably already my style at the time, uh, three inch there. But I did it a different way. There I put in quarter inch uh, dados at each piece and then put a spline in there. I would call it spline joinery. And again, I knew I was experimenting with that. I think this was for a railing system that I was doing it for a customer and I was looking at, all right, you know, what, what, how can I do that kind of stuff? Because I can't get solid wood to match their uh, spalted oak flooring and their cabinets and things like that. I can't get solid wood for a railing, so I'm gonna have to make up my own. But there you go. You know, I don't know if that's spalted or what that is, but it's really pretty cool looking. Right? 